the 1967 Ferrari 330 GTS. You really don't see too many of these on the road anymore, and honestly, you'll be lucky enough to even see one of them in your entire lifetime, and we have it for you today on this latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews. I'm Jay, and I'm really excited to talk to you all about this Ferrari 330 GTS today. I think you're going to learn a lot because classic Ferraris are just one of a kind, and I also want to thank the Blackhawk Automotive Museum in Danville, California, for letting us come on down and film today. There's a lot of cool cars there. I really encourage you to, uh, to check it out, but... Today's focus is this 67 Ferrari 330 GTS. Now, just to give you some 330 GTS background history, because I know not all of you are very familiar with classic Ferraris, the uh, 330 GTS premiered at the 1966 Paris Motor Show, and the coupe version, the GTC Berlinetta, premiered the previous March at Geneva. Now, the Ferrari 330, it, it was a series of V12-powered uh, cars that uh, they came in 2 plus 2 GT and the 2C Berlinetta and Spider versions as well. And there was also race car versions between 1963 and 1968. Now the GTS means the Spider like this one right here. <laughs> Right, and what you just heard was the 4-liter V12 engine. Total 300 horsepower and 245 pound-feet of torque. It's paired to a 5-speed manual transmission with all power, of course, going to the rear wheels. Now, just to let you know, like, back in 1966, 67, 300 horsepower and 245 pound-feet of torque was a lot of power for a car. Now, today, you don't really, you know, think, oh, 300 horsepower, you can get that out of a V6. Uh, but again, this is many, many decades ago, and it, it, this was one of the fastest cars of the time. In fact, it went from 0 to 60 miles per hour in about the mid-second uh, range, and the top speed was 146 miles per hour. Now, it is also a, a very rare car. Just to give you an idea, Ferrari only built 600 of the GTC models and only 100 of these, the GTS models. But in fact, only 99 of those were production because one of them was a pre-production model. And obviously this makes this car extremely rare and just unquestionably special. Because I mean, just look at it. It's just absolutely beautiful. And you got to think of this uh, 330 GTS, it's more of a grand tour, uh, honestly, than a race car. Uh, you got to think of it as sort of like, I don't know, the, the, the original Ferrari California T, which is what you can buy right now. This is what you take on weekend getaways. Uh, you have, you know, your girlfriend sitting beside you up front and you can get some luggage in the rear and you're just going to go cruising up the California coast. This is what this Ferrari is for, as opposed to actually going to the racetrack. Uh, I mean, look at all this chrome detailing. They honestly, they, remember, they don't make cars like this anymore. They don't use chrome bumpers. Uh, if you kind of remember in the uh, 70s and 80s, European imported cars to the U.S., uh, instead of their original chrome bumpers, they had those ugly plastic ones up front, the black plastic. Uh, they just didn't meet safety regulations, but obviously this car is from a different era. And obviously it was designed by... Ferrari's uh, typical go-to uh, designer studio, Pininfarina. Oh, I just love those wire spoke wheels. It's just, oh. In fact, if you notice earlier with that engine, um, this was one of the first Ferraris where you could actually hear the radio. Ferrari purposely designed this engine to be a bit quieter. Again, this was all about cruising, and Ferrari was trying to widen its customer base at the time. Because not everybody, again, wanted a race car. They wanted something luxurious and extremely special. Oh, uh, let's take a look at this engine here. Here it is, 4.0 liter V12. And like I said, this was one of the fastest cars on the road for its debut. Now, 
it's kind of interesting the story of how Ferrari road cars came to America. It was it was actually started up by a guy named Luigi Cinetti, and he opened a dealership in Greenwich, Connecticut. Now. He was originally an Italian-born race car driver, and he immigrated to the U.S. in uh, or during World War II, and he later became fa- Ferrari's factory agent in the U.S. In fact, he was personally appointed by Enzo Ferrari, and he opened the first and for many years the only Ferrari dealership in the U.S. He's the guy he basically convinced Enzo Ferrari to produce and sell road cars to wealthy Americans. Basically, Enzo Ferrari viewed the road car business as a way to fund Ferrari's racing programs. And take a look at this interior. Oh, I just love this tan leather. Look at all this wood trim. It's in remarkably great shape considering this car's age. Obviously, this is before the era of carbon fiber, lightweight aluminum materials. So, yeah, this was all handcrafted, put together, as opposed to everything being done by industrialized machinery. Notice there's no cup holders. Um, you have a very basic radio, and of course that five-speed manual. But it's the little touches here throughout. Like just for example, the gauges are in Italian. I love those little things, right? Like that. And I, I think the design of the dash in the overall interior is just—it's it, timeless. Does it look? Old, yes, but not old-fashioned. And I love that three-spoke steering wheel with the wood trim throughout and just the metal right in the center. There's Again, there's no buttons on steering wheels. This is just a completely different era of cars. No fancy-schmancy uh, electronics. This is all analog goodness. And what's interesting is that Ferrari placed a transmission uh, behind the passenger compartment just in order to even out the weight balance. And the chassis is a uh, steel tubular with a steel body as well. So again, no lightweight components. And uh, the car weighs an estimated 2,980 pounds. Oh, I just love those switches like that. And the overall quality, yeah, it, it was pretty good. I mean, it's, again, I, I, it's night and day to compare something like the 67 Ferrari 330 GTS to today's California T. Maybe it's, you know, ancestral successor in a way. It's just a completely, a Ferrari was just a completely different automaker back in the 1960s than it is today. It hadn't, it's not, it wasn't quite mainstream like it has become. Ah, there's that gated five-speed manual. I love these. Again, Ferrari is done with manual transmissions. They're all about the F1 dual clutch. So this is special. So now you might be wondering, how much does something like this go for? Now, it's kind of interesting here. Now, a barn fine 1967 Ferrari 330 GTS, not this particular one, it had been in a barn, get this, for 44 years following an engine fire, and it sold a few years ago, back in actually 2014 precisely, at auction for just over $2 million. In fact, it almost set the record at the time for any 330 GTS at an auction. So this one is estimated to cost probably around $2.5 million, but its predecessor, uh, the 250 GT and 275 GTS, for an example, the 250 GT, that was a, a replica version of that was featured in the famous movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Those go for well over 15, 16, 17 million dollars. So at two and a half million dollars estimated, this one is it, it may not have totally uh, peaked in value yet. But unlike most other uh, mainstream automakers or just automakers in general, Ferrari is one of the very few whose cars actually increase in value over time. An example, the Ferrari 308 uh, that was driven by Magnum PI on that famous TV show, just maybe like five, six years ago, you can get a used one for around thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars Just, just in, in today, they're going for about $75,000 to $80,000. So yeah, those are even increased in value too. And notice the large trunk here. Yes, Ferrari did this on purpose. This was, like I said, the weekend getaway Ferrari. They wanted you to get your bags in there and just go cruising as opposed to racing.
And the 330 GTC and the GTS, um, the, again, th these were just more refined than earlier Ferraris. They were quieter, they were easier to drive. Again, they, Ferrari was catering to a specific uh, niche segment in America at the time. They had money to spend, the movie stars, uh, Steve McQueen, all of them, and this is what they wanted. Just like the, it is today, Ferrari was very much a status symbol. And I think this exterior design, it, it's still absolutely stunning. It's, it's simple, but just beautiful all at once. And normally, I'm not a big fan of the uh, wire wheels uh, on just about any car, but here, wow, uh, I, I can't imagine anything else. Now, both the uh, 330 GTS and the GTC, they were succeeded uh, just by the uh, 365 GTC and GTS in 1968. So the 330s were only on the market for a couple of years. Again, they didn't make that many. Only 100 of these GTS models that you see right here were built. So yeah, if you own one or if you find one or you just see one like this at a museum, you need to know it is special and there's just at most 100 of them out there in the entire world. And I love that exhaust, the quad, uh, quad pipe exhaust there. I just love it how it just sort of sticks out and it, it just makes some noise, but it's not too noisy. Again, it's a good cruiser. But again, it's wicked fast. So I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Any more questions for me, just leave them in the comments section below. And be sure to uh, stay tuned for my next R uh, Car Buzz Unboxing Review.